Birds today, more specifically the class Andalcrown group Aves, the Ornithus, are among the most diverse group of animals around today, and are found globally, filling in a wide range of niches, from the coldest of tundras to the most humid of tropics, and their evolution and origins continues to amaze with both how diverse they were, as well as some of their close and more basal relatives. Early birds diversified throughout the Jurassic and Cretaceous, becoming capable flyers with supercharged growth rates, but like their non-avian relatives, they were decimated by the KPG extinction, with only modern birds, the aforementioned aves, exploding in numbers afterwards, now culminating in more than 10,000 known species. One of these lineages that became extinct were the short-tailed avulans, known as enantiornithes, or opposite birds, so named because the construction of their shoulder bones was in reverse compared to living birds. They also retained claws on their wings, and also had toothy snouts instead of beaks, and while many of them lacked the lift-generating tail fans of the more derived relatives, they appear to still have been adept flyers. They comprised the most diverse, early radiation of birds during the Mesozoic, with varying taxa, exhibiting a wide range of body sizes, morphologies and ecologies, ranging from sand probers, fish eaters, to seed eaters. A recently described genus further adds to this diversity, and while the overall birds appear as typical, they do have a peculiar piece of anatomy that is situated in their heads. This holotype fossil, which preserves some other important skeletal features previously unknown of among early stem and extant birds, is very complete, with the nearly fully preserved skeleton and even traces of feathers being present, and was itself uncovered from the Lower Cretaceous Geofu Tang Formation in northeastern China that also includes animals like Microraptor and Cetacosaurus. The main takeaway from the discovery, however, was that near the short skull, which contained numerous pig-shaped teeth, was the preserved remains of a structure known as the hyoid, which supports the tongue, and was notably particularly long in this animal, being only slightly shorter than the skull. The specimen was given the name of Breverostruavis macrohyoideus, literally meaning short-snouted birds with a large hyoid, and is an apt description to be sure. In most other dinosaurs, other than modern birds, the hyoid, which relates to tongue mobility, is relatively short and simple, suggesting they weren't all that mobile. Modern birds, however, have elongated hyoids, particularly the paired hyobranchial elements that allow them to better use their tongues for procuring and handling food, with extreme examples being seen in animals like hummingbirds, honey eaters, and woodpeckers, the latter of which having their tongues being so long that they actually wrap around the top of their heads, and even enter one of their nostrils. Breverostuavis is peculiar in how their hide is set up in comparison, however, as these extant birds have especially long epibranchial bones that help to make it up, whereas this Inantionothenes hyoid is instead made up of bones called Sarasobranchials, which have also been reported in a couple of other animals, namely Solcavis, another Inantionothean, and Jehalornis. This indicates that they were using this elongated hyoid and therefore tongue and food acquisition and allowing them to potentially access resources otherwise unavailable or harder to reach for other animals of the time. About the size of a modern starling, their long claws and the proportion of their toe bones also indicate that they were tree-dwelling animals, and after analysing the evolutionary relationship between Breverostuavis and their relatives, it was found that they didn't fit in with any of the major groups of Enantionotheans, indicating that said elongated hyoid apparatus evolved independently multiple times across the group. Their diet is unknown, although it's possible that they use their tongues either to reach the nectar-like fluids and season plants, or use them to better explore the barks of trees for his and insects, the latter potentially being more likely, considering the time in which they lived was quite early in flowering plant evolution. The long muscle attachments, rather than trying to get the tongue out as far as possible, could have also been useful for a shorter, but still muscular tongue to manoeuvre foods in and around the mouth. To find out more about them, the team who describes Breverostruavis also plan to examine several other fossil birds to determine when the epibranchial bones evolved in living birds, and by extension, to shed light on why this tax revolves their unusual combination of a short snout and long tongue bones. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.